Hello, Namaskar, Vanakkam. Julius Caesar, Act 3, Scene 1. This is what? I think a scene which runs into 12 to 13 to 14 pages. So it's fairly long. Also, it's also the most dramatic scene as far as the play is concerned because this is where the assassination of Julius Caesar takes place. So in terms of drama on stage and in text, this particular scene, the assassination scene as it is called, is definitely the most dramatic. Another important aspect that you need to bear in mind is that this is one scene where we see almost all the main male characters on stage. The two female characters, Portia and Calpurnia, are not there, but all the male characters because they're all part of the conspiracy to assassinate Julius Caesar. So in terms of the action on the stage, Julius Caesar, Act 3, Scene 1, is the most dramatic scene. Act 3, Scene 2 is important because that's where the turning point happens as far as the play is concerned. So these two scenes, Scene 1 and Scene 2 of Act 3, are definitely the most important from the point of view of the play and definitely from the point of view of your examination. So let's get started with the detailed line by line, word by word explanation of Act 3, Scene 1. I have also done a separate video in which I've explained the entire thing in Hindi. It's not the best Hindi, but jisko Hindi mein samajna hai, usko wo Hindi mein samaj sakta hai. That's a separate video. Okay, so it depends on what you are more comfortable with. Okay, so let's dive straight into the text. Now you see the crowd of people and there are a whole lot of people, the soothsayer, the Artemidorus, uh, Artemidorus, Caesar, Brutus, Decius Brutus, Cassius, Sinna, Casca, Trebonius, everyone, right? All of them are part of this scene. So this is, again, important. Uh, Metellus Simber, an important character who I would, who actually initiates the entire process, uh, the plot in which Caesar gets killed. Now, Caesar says to the soothsayer, he remembers what happened in Act 1. He says the Ides of March are come, which means that today is the 15th of March. You said that I need to be aware of the 15th of March. But what has happened? Nothing has happened so far. Soothsayer says, yes, Caesar, but the day is not yet over. The day, the Ides of March, is not yet gone. It is not yet over. The day is still pretty much on. The date on the calendar is still the 15th of March. Okay. Now, immediately, Artemidorus says, who we met in Act 2, right? He stops Caesar. He hails him and says, read this schedule, which means read this letter. He hands him. Oh, hands over a letter to Julius Caesar. Decius Brutus says, Trebonius dog desire you to overread at your best leisure. This is his humble suit. Now, Decius Brutus hands over another letter to Caesar saying that Trebonius has given this and he wants you to read over this letter. Overread was Shakespeare's slightly poetic way of saying read over and examine it. So he wants him to read Trebonius's letter whenever it is convenient to him. This is his humble request. Okay, that is the request from Trebonius. Artemidorus says, O Caesar, read my letter first because for mine is a suit that touches Caesar nearer. Read it, great Caesar. So he says, that read my letter first because my letter affects you directly. He says that touches Caesar nearer, which means it affects you directly. So you need to read this first. And he refers to him as great Caesar. Caesar says, what touches us ourselves shall be last served. So he's being... He's talking like, oh, no, I will not do anything of the sort. Anything which concerns me directly, I will attend to it last. People's interest comes first. 
that's what caesar is trying to convey through this very pompous manner of rejecting this letter given to him by artemidorus so he says that we will attend to our own matters at the end which will be last sir artemidorus says delay not caesar read it immediately read it instantly do not delay because he has there warned him about the plot to kill him so he wants caesar to read it before it's too late caesar says what is the fellow mad is he crazy he is going on insisting even while me i have told him that i will attend to matters that concern me at the end publius who is another person out there he says to artemidorus he says sir stand aside okay give place means stand aside now uh, sira was it's it's called sir but it is said in a slightly a uh, condescending manner thoda sa you know contemptuous manner he is telling him to kind of hey, hello just stand aside sir you know so sir is not being said with respect he is not showing him respect even while calling him so but it is said in a slightly condescending and contemptuous kind of manner cassius says what urge you your petitions in the street come to the capitol so he says oh you are trying to give your petitions on the street that Caesar should accept your petitions and read them immediately while you give them on the streets. Gali me de rahe ho? No, come to the capital, which means that's the place where these kind of petitions ought to be given, handed over. So that's what Cassius says to Artemidorus, and Caesar now goes up to the Senate House. So the initial part of the scene is at the capital, and then the entire scene where the assassination takes place. is at the senate house right so all of them follow caesar to the senate house at this point in time popilius tells cassius that i wish your enterprise today may thrive so he says enterprise which means plan that i do hope that your plan thrive means succeeds today okay so popilius is telling cassius on the side and i do hope that your plan actually becomes successful today cassius gets immediately suspicious now you see you will see this through the play that cassius is actually a very cunning kind of a person he's a very street smart and clever guy so cassius says what plan popius popius does not reply he says goodbye and good luck and he moves towards caesar now this means that popius is aware of what is going to happen at the senate right and cassius wonders how did he come to know so while popius advances to caesar brutus comes to cassius and says what did popius lena say now popius lena is a senator of rome okay this guy is a roman senator okay senator of rome Cassius says he wished today that our enterprise might thrive. I fear our purpose is discovered. So he said, he tells Brutus that Popius Lena said that he wished that our plan should succeed. I am afraid. I fear that is, I am afraid that our plot has been discovered. You know, our plans have been discovered by other people. You know, people know about our assassination plot. Brutus says. look how he makes to caesar mark him he says look he's approaching caesar he's going to talk to caesar keep an eye on him mark him means keep an eye on him okay he makes to caesar means he's approaching caesar cassius says casca be sudden for we fear prevention brutus what shall be done so he stills casca cassius that casca be quick sudden means be quick because we fear being preempted prevention means that we fear being preempted that is someone may come to prevent us from carrying out what we plan to do okay so there could be someone who could come and stop us from carrying out our assassination plan we could be stopped and then he tells to brutus 
he asked Brutus, what do we do now? Okay, what will we do? If this be known, Cassius or Caesar never shall turn back for I will slay myself. So now he's saying something. This is an important uh, line from the reference to point, reference uh, to context point of view. So he says that if our plan is known, agar hamare plan ke baare mein pata chal gaya, then either Caesar or I will die. Never shall turn back means Cassius or Caesar never shall turn back means one of us will die because I will kill myself if I cannot kill him. If I am not able to kill Julius Caesar, I will die by suicide. I will kill myself. So one of us will definitely die. It will not be the case that I am not able to kill him. So he also is alive or I am also and I'm also alive. No, either I will kill him or if I'm not able to kill him, I will kill myself. So I will slay myself. Slay means I will kill myself. Okay. Cassius says, uh, Brutus says, Cassius, be constant. Constant means be calm. Don't get so agitated. Populus Lena speaks not of our purposes. For look, he smiles and Caesar doth not change. So he says, look there, Populus Lena. So you see the difference between Cassius and um, uh, Brutus. Cassius, of course, is very coming. His mind keeps thinking of various possibilities. But Brutus is a little more calm in the way he observes things more carefully. So he says, look at Populus Lena speaking there to Brutus. He's actually smiling while he's speaking to Caesar. And Caesar doth not change. Means Caesar's expression, facial expression, body language is not changing. So that means that he's not speaking of our plot, of our plan. Okay. Cassius says, Trebonius knows his time. Trebonius knows when he should make the move. At which moment he should make his move. Because look you Brutus, he draws Mark Antony out of the way. He, Trebonius, the job which has been entrusted to Trebonius as part of the plot is that he should move Mark Antony out of the way. And why should he do that? You will know this in the context of what happens later on in the play. Because Mark Antony is the best friend of Julius Caesar. And if he were there, he would try to prevent the conspirators from killing Julius Caesar. So Trebonius has been instructed by Cassius and maybe Brutus that he should move um, uh, Antony out of the Senate while they would carry out the assassination. Okay. So he says that look there, he's pulling Mark Antony out of the way. Antony and Trebonius exit that particular scene. Decius Brutus now says, where is Metellus Simba? Let him go and presently prefer his suit to Caesar. Now, prefer here is present. What does he have to present? His petition. That he should go and present his petition to Julius Caesar. Who should be doing that? Metellus Simba. Brutus says, he's addressed, pressed near and second him. So he says, he's already speaking to him. Caesar is already being spoken to by Metellus Simber. You go there and second him. Now, second him means what? That whatever petition is being given by Metellus Simber, uh, Sinna should go and second that. Think that, huh, ye theek bol hai, please do something like that. So, second him means to support him. Okay. To support what is being said by Metellus Simber. Sinna says, Kaska, you are the first that rears your hand. Now, this is an important line. So, Sinna is telling to Kaska that you will be the first one who will raise your hand and stab Julius Caesar. So, it will be Kaska who will be the first one and then thereafter everyone will join. He will be the first one to make his move. So, he's kind of cautioning him, telling him to be alert and ready because the moment is very near. Caesar says, are we all ready? What is now amiss that Caesar and his Senate must redress? Redress. Now, this is an extremely ironic line, isn't it? So, are we all ready? These guys are getting ready for something else. And Caesar is talking about official matters of, you know, petitions and stuff like that. 
So the line, are we all ready, is an important key phrase that is extremely ironic. It's a piece of dramatic irony, right? Uh, because the conspirators are getting ready to assassinate Julius Caesar, which he's completely oblivious to, while he's talking about the Senate's business. And it creates dramatic tension on stage. These guys are all moving closer. Casca is getting ready to stab him first. And this guy is saying, are we all ready to discuss some official matter? It also highlights Julius Caesar's lack of suspicion. Okay, he's not suspecting anyone. And that creates sympathy for Caesar in the reader's mind or in the audience's mind. Because we see that people are going to kill him. And he's completely unaware of what the plot is. You understand? Please remember, the play is called Julius Caesar, even though he gets killed in before the interval in that sense. You know, Act 3, Scene 1 is not even the halfway stage of the play, but he's getting killed here, right? But the play is named after him. So Julius Caesar, in that sense, is a larger-than-life figure. Okay, now, Mitchell Simba says, Most high, most mighty, most puissant Caesar... Mitilus Simba throws before thy seat and humble heart and he kneels before Julius Caesar. Now, what does he say? Most high is referring to Julius Caesar in extremely lofty kind of adjectives, calling him high, calling him mighty and calling him puissant, which means most powerful Caesar. He says Mitilus Simba throws before thy seat, that is, he kneels before uh, you with a humble heart. Throws before means that he's on his knees. He kneels before your throne before with a humble heart. Caesar says, I must prevent thee, Simba. He says, I must stop you. I must prevent thee means I must stop you. These couchings and these lowly courtesies might fire the blood of ordinary men. And turn pre-ordinance and first decree into the law of children. What does he mean? He's using very lofty kind of vocabulary. He says, your kneeling. Couching means referring to. You know. That song I suddenly got reminded. These kneeling and these lowly courtesies. So he says these very respectful gestures. You know what you are referring to? Very respectful gesture that you are making towards me. That might flatter. Fire the blood means that might flatter. You know that might make amuse. That may make ordinary men feel very happy. Okay. And turn pre-ordinance. And first decree into the law of children. And that may turn Roman laws, which are predetermined. Roman laws are written in some book or the other, like the Constitution of India. Similarly, they would have some kind of book of law of Rome. So pre-ordinance means pre-ordinant, uh, pre-ordine uh, Roman laws, right? Predetermined Roman laws and decrees. Decrees also means some kind of laws into some kind of child's game. You know that you would do something, do this and expect me to kind of ignore some law which is written in some book and make it and make it seem as though it is some child's game. Be not fond to think that Caesar bears such rebel blood that will be thought from the true quality with that which melteth fools. So he says, do not be so fond. Fond means foolish. Do not be so foolish to think that Caesar has such unstable blood. Rebel blood means unstable. You know, that he will change his mind just because you kneel before me. So he says, that don't think like that about Julius Caesar. That will be thought from the true quality with that which melteth fools. Do not be so foolish to think that Caesar has such unstable blood that it will be thought means that it will be influenced from the true quality, that it can be influenced by tricks 
that persuade only fools, melteth fools, that from the true quality with that, you know, that influenced by tricks, you know, by tricks of this kind. So he's referring to him, it the kneeling part as this show of humility, as a trick, okay, thinking that that will melt him, saying that I'm not a fool. I mean, sweet words, low crooked curtsies and base spaniel fawning. Spaniel is a reference to a dog. So he says that I mean that flattery or sweet words, sweet words, low crooked curtsies, that is low bows, you know, jukne ke saath, you know, because he's kneeling before him and flattering, fawning, you know, uh, will not kind of... Uh, Sorry, a low bows and pathetic base dog like a fawning. You know, base means something which is pathetic and which is referring to almost like dog like fawning because dogs come and show a lot of affection. Nothing of that will affect me to change my mind and make it like, you know, changing some law and making it, treating it as though it's some child's game. And then he says, Your brother, he's aware of what he's asking for. He says, Your brother. Thy means your brother by decree, by law is banished. He has been exiled from Rome. He has been exiled from Rome. And if you do, if you do bend and pray and fawn for him, means you try to flatter me for the sake of your brother, I spurn you like a cur out of my way. Cur is also a dog. Okay. It's also a word which Shakespeare uses in many of his plays. He says that if you kneel and beg and flatter me for your brother's sake, I will spurn you. Spurn you means I will kick you and I will ignore you. I will throw you out like a dog out of my way. Please know that Caesar will not do any wrong, nor without cause will he be satisfied. He will not be satisfied unless there is a very good reason. And he will never do any wrong. So he's being very bombastic and very clear headed about what he will do and what he will not do. Is that clear? So it gives you a sense about the kind of ruler that Julius Caesar imagines himself to be. Okay. Metallus Simber does not give up. He says, Is there no voice more worthy? than my own to sound more sweetly in great Caesar's here for the repealing of my banished brother. So he's making an appeal to all the other senators and nobles who are assembled at the Senate. He says that isn't there someone else whose voice would be more sweet than me in being able to convince Julius Caesar, the great Julius Caesar, that my brother banishment exile needs to be repealed means it needs to be revoked it needs to be turned back he needs to be forgiven and allowed to come back into rome okay so he says that isn't there a voice which is more worthy than mine okay uh, brutus listens to this and he kind of uses this as an opportunity to get closer to julius caesar he says I kiss thy hand, telling Caesar, but not in flattery, Caesar, that I kiss your hand, but I am not doing so in flattery. He's also kneeling before him. He says, to sound more sweetly in great Caesar's ear for the repealing of my, sorry, uh, desiring thee that Publius Simber may have an immediate freedom of repeal. So he says that I wish that you repeal Publius Simber, that is the name of Metellus Simber's brother, that I do desire, I do wish that you repeal. The repeal means you revoke Bublius Simba's banishment immediately with an immediate freedom of repeal. Caesar says, what Brutus? Now, this play does not have Publius Simba as a character. This particular character has been introduced, not on stage, but the mention of him has been introduced only in order to give the conspirators an excuse to get closer to Caesar, right? So he's like a ghost character who never appears on stage. Ghost for the booth, right? But he's like a character who never appears on stage, but is only mentioned. His name is only mentioned by the other characters. 
right? So um, that's the limited purpose of Publius symbol. Cassius says, pardon Caesar, Caesar pardon. So Cassius also steps forward and makes a request to Caesar. As low as to thy foot doth Cassius fall to beg enfranchisement for Publius symbol. So he says that I fall at your feet, pardon him. I fall at your feet to restore Publius Simba's exile, restore him to citizenship because he has been exiled, which means he's no longer being treated as a citizen of Rome. So enfranchisement means restoration of the rights of a citizen of Rome. Okay, that's what enfranchisement means of his rights, that is Publius Simba's rights as a citizen of Rome. This is not Cassius, this is Caesar. Okay, this is a printing mistake in most books, surprisingly. I could be well moved if I were as you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me. Now, this is a longish and an important passage of Julius Caesar. He says, I could be convinced. Well moved means I could be convinced. If I were you. If I were like you, Cassius, if I could beg others to change their minds, pray to move means if I could beg others, you know, pray means if I beg others to move means to change their minds, then prayer, that kind of begging, the prayers would convince me as well. If I could do that to others, these kind of prayers could do that to me as well, which means nahi hoga. it won't happen. But I am constant as the northern star. Now he's making a comparison to the northern star. Julius Caesar is making a com is comparing himself to the northern star, of whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. So he says the northern star has such a fixed and unchanging quality about it. Resting means it is fixed at one place. True fixed and unchanging. It is fixed at one place and it is unchanging, resting quality. And it has no equal in the sky. Permanent is referring to sky. There is no comparison with anyone else. There is no one like the northern star because it is a fixed and something which is unchanging. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks. Unnumbered sparks is reference to the stars okay because they are no one has counted the number of stars and they kind of shine so that's why he's referring to them as sparks they're all fire and everyone doth shine so he says that they're all fire and shine you know because they're shining and they look very fiery but there is one among them that holds its place there is but one in all which holds its place and that is a reference to the northern star that's the one which never changes. So in the world, it is furnished well with men and men are flesh and blood and apprehensive. Yet in the number, I do know but one that unassailable holds on his rank, unshaped of motion. He says that similarly, the world is populated with men. Okay. Similarly, the world is populated. Furnished means it is full of men and men are flesh and blood and men are made of flesh and blood and are capable of feeling very anxious okay men are capable of feeling very tense and anxious yet in the number i do know but one that unassailable holds on his rank yet of them all referring to the men among all the men i know one person who keeps his position holds on his rank means who keeps his position who is unwavering and refuses to change unshaked of motion so he says that he who keeps his position without being moved he says that i am he that's me i am unmoved i am unchanged among all the men like the northern star that's me so you see the pomposity 
with which Caesar is referring to himself in third person. Anyone who refers to himself in third person also shows that he is extremely confident and pompous as far as he is concerned about himself. So he says, let me a little show it. Let me show you, even in this, that I was constant Simba should be banished and constant do remain to keep so. So he says, I was determined. I was resolute. I was constant. Here it means I was resolute. Okay. Means unwavering, unchanged. That Simba should be banished. And I remain constant. I remain resolute. Unchanged. That he should remain banished. Understood? I hope I have done justice to it. Explain every single word and the meaning and repeated it so that my purpose is that you know sasa revision be hojai and the emphasis with which i say it you should be able to you know remember it for quite some time okay now the important thing is that caesar uses the metaphor of the northern star to describe his unwavering commitment to what not to the people to his principles his unwavering commitment to his principles and the northern star is used as a constant reference point which never moves from its position. So it's used as a symbol for something which is of a firm, unchanging and resolute character. And Caesar says, I am also like that. Clear? Great. Always remember two things. I will be sounding like <laughs> Julius Caesar. English means ah, ye thoda uncharacteristically thoda pompous ho gaya. No, I don't think I am like that. So I am going to remove this. I am going to remove this. Let me say something different. And that, and that is something which I think even you will agree. That Right? So, therefore, Dil Mange SWS. Okay. Kanmani Unboard Kadalan Nan in the Kadidame. Have you heard this song? People in Tamil Nadu and Kerala would have heard this song. I keep forgetting the lyrics. Anyway, Sinna says, O Caesar, Caesar says, Hence, will thou lift up Olympus? Now, Olympus is a mountain in Greek mythology. And it is considered the home of the gods. So Caesar is implying that he is God. He is saying that, Kya tum, I mean, will you lift up Mount Olympus? Is it possible? No, it's impossible. Can you lift up Mount Olympus? It's not possible. Similarly, can you convince me? That's what he's trying to say. But by the reference to Olympus, which is a mountain in Greek mythology, which is used as, a, which is thought of as the home of the gods, Caesar is indirectly implying that he is God. This is Brutus says, great Caesar. Caesar says, doth not Brutus bootless kneel. So he says, why are you kneeling when even Brutus's kneeling has been in vain? The other Brutus, the original Brutus, when Decius Brutus kneels, he says, why are you kneeling? The other Brutus has kneeled and it has not had any effect on me. Why are you kneeling? Now, before this, uh, an important point I want to make to you. So when he says, will you lift Mount Olympus? It is a, an arrogant way of Caesar being dismissive of the request being made by so many people, by Mitchell Simber, by Brutus, by Cassius, by uh, who was the other person who, uh, who he said this, by Tusina, right? So he is kind of dismissive to all of them. Uh, 
will you lift up olympus is a rhetorical question he's not uh, expecting him to say yes i will do it or no i will not be able to do it but it is being said for dramatic effect and it is uh, caesar trying to convey to him that your request is absurd and impossible to fulfill i will not do it okay it's also trying to say that you know it's so outrageous you know will you lift that so you can't no sim similarly don't even try making this request about publius simber because it is impossible for me to accede and accept your request so it shows caesar's growing arrogance and his underestimation of what the conspirators can actually do can actually do and this happens many times even in real life you know you may think very powerful in your position and you think that you are doing the right thing but then all these other minions may all get together conspire against you to harm you you know unity in strength may they will all get together and harm you that's what is have going to happen to julius caesar so he, julius caesar ka this is an important point that you need to bear in mind julius caesar essentially feels that he is unassailable he nobody can harm him you know he thinks and we saw this in act 2 also when he was talking to calpurnia right so he feels that he cannot be challenged and this kind of a hubris this kind of an attitude finally leads to caesar's downfall because uh, you know the the conspirators say i'm so arrogant let's do this to him so now the important thing casca says hands speak for me speak hands for me now this is an important line what does casca really mean by that and then casca immediately goes and stabs caesar because he wants the hands to do the work for him so he is kind of making hands as a particular object which will actually carry out the action as so he doesn't have anything to do with the hands now this is an important line because uh here the hands must do the action which they have been planning for all this while uh, they believe that they are doing this act for the good of rome we have already seen that in act 2 also so it also means that the conspirators are now gaining control over it the moment casca's hands do the act of stabbing julius caesar the conspirators the balance of power so far we were seeing caesar being completely in control i will not forgive publius simber right he is being very dismissive and now suddenly the power changes the power moves into the hands of the conspirators so this is the first step towards the dethronement of the authority of julius caesar i'm getting goose pimples while i'm speaking all this has, has any one of you acted in a play and you know been able to speak with flourish on stage you know the throw of the voice the modulation the diction the body language have you ever done that it's great fun because you know that x number of people 100 200 500 people are all looking at you and you are in control of the stage it's a great feeling public speaking itself is a great feeling so now caesar is rendered extremely powerless and there is also dark irony in which with which kafka is saying hands speak for me because it kind of is the first act of violence as far as the play is concerned and then caesar sees brutus also stabbing him because all the other conspirators stab and then finally brutus stabs caesar that's what shocks caesar he says you too brutus and you too brutus you were my friend you also stab me which is why whenever any friend that stabs you he's referred to as brutus it's a line which is relevant and used even today in the 21st century he says you too brutus i did not expect this from you of all people and he says if that is the case then die caesar fall means he is referring to him ref in the context of death then caesar should die 
if brutus if i have to be killed even by brutus then it's not worth killing it then die caesar then caesar dies now sinna immediately cries liberty freedom tyranny is dead so they are kind of saying that they have done it for the larger good of rome and they say it is for the cause of liberty it is called for the cause of freedom because tyranny which was symbolized by julius caesar has now been killed run hence proclaim cried about the streets ki bahar jao and proclaim it to everyone that this is what has really happened they are not saying we have killed caesar they are saying liberty and freedom has have, has been born because tyranny is dead etu brutus is also a symbol of extreme disappointment of caesar it is an expression of extreme disbelief it is an expression of extreme heartbreak of julius caesar at seeing what brutus did to him he it shows his disappointment and the depth of the betrayal that caesar feels at seeing brutus also being one of the conspirators okay so he is not shocked by casca sinna cassius others stabbing him he shocked most by brutus please remember this because the relationship between brutus and caesar will be one of the important questions that can be asked in the examination so the treachery of brutus is what shocks julius caesar that in many senses is the most painful wound that is inflicted on julius caesar's body now after he sees brutus stabbing him and says you too brutus he seems to be in that one second he seems to have suddenly accepted and says therefore then die caesar now there is no point living if the person who i considered my friend also stabs me so there is some level of dignity with which caesar dies at the end his last two three words and this line in many senses et tu brutus then dies caesar then falls caesar in many senses encapsulates the tragedy of this play julius caesar because caesar till such time till a few lines back we saw him as a very powerful leader he is brought down by people and among those is one person who he trusted the most right so it connects you to many themes of the play the play the theme of friendship the theme of revenge the theme of betrayal uh, the theme of power the theme of mortality there is also uh, another view point by some critics saying that then fall caesar is some kind of a curse that julius caesar has inflicted on the conspirators that's another view point i'm just making you aware that you know shakespeare and plays have already always been interpreted differently by different critics so this is a slightly different view point of some of the critics which you could bear in mind it's almost like you know he's accepting his own death but he's also cursing them ki this will happen to you also then fall caesar with caesar's fall your fall will also downfall will also happen that's how it has been interpreted though it's not very clear in the kind of words that caesar has used we don't know what shakespeare had in mind okay now cassius says some of you should go to the common pulpits which is the platform and cry out the same thing liberty freedom and enfranchisement which means that full citizenship to everyone because that's what they were talking about before uh, julius caesar was stabbed so he says that is full citizenship to everyone no one will be banished or exiled brutus says people and senators do not be affrighted fly not stand stiff ambitions debt is paid so brutus tells to the other senators out there that do not be afraid affrighted is afraid and he says do not run away you can stand where you are standing only caesar had to die for his ambition which means ambition's death so this is like only caesar had to die had to die that is he has repaid the ambition because he was too ambitious 
he was too ambitious and therefore we had to get rid of him for the sake of the good of Rome. So, wo karza chuka diya hai. That debt has been repaid by the assassination of Julius Caesar. Casca says to Brutus, you go to the platform. Decius Brutus says, Cassius also should go. Brutus says, where is Publius? Sina says, here he is quite confounded with this mutiny. He says he is completely stunned by what has happened. Obviously, he was unaware. He was not part of the conspirators. So he is extremely rattled, stunned, confused by this mutiny, by means, by this rebellion. Mytilus Simba says, stand fast together, lest some friend of Caesar's should chance. So he says, let us all stand together, just in case some friend of Julius Caesar tries to, should chance means, should try to do something. And then his sentence is not complete. Brutus says, talk not of standing. Publius, good cheer. There is no harm intended to your person, nor to no Roman here. So tell them, Publius. So he says, Publius, cheer up. We do not mean any harm to you, nor to any other Roman. Our target was only Julius Caesar. Okay. So he says, so please go and tell this to the people. He entrusts that job to Publius. Okay. Who is a senator of Rome. He's also, as I told you this, no, he's a senator of Rome. Now, Cassius says, and leave us, Publius, lest that the people rushing on us should do your age some mischief. So he's an elderly person. So he says, and leave this place right now because there would be people who would be rushing towards us, maybe to attack us. So in the process, they should not hurt you. They should not harm you. Some mischief means they should not harm you. Brutus says, do so and let no man abide this deed, but we the doers. Brutus says, yes. He's saying, do so means, to nikal jau. as what Cassia says, do so means you leave immediately because no one should suffer the consequences. Abide this deed means should suffer the consequences. suffer the consequences of this deed. Deed is the assassination of Julius Caesar, except us who have done it. We are the doers, except us. No one else should bear the consequences of, suffer the consequences of what we did, the conspirators. Trebonius re-enters. What did Trebonius leave at that time? He left with Mark Antony. Okay. Cassius says, where is Antony. Trebonius says, fled to his house amazed. Men, wives and children stare, cry out and run as if it were doomsday. So he says he ran to his house. So Mark Antony has come to know of it. He ran away to his house and he was completely in a state of amazement. He was completely stunned. Men, wives and children are staring. They are crying and they are running as if it were Doomsday. Doomsday is considered in Christianity as the day of judgment. Brutus says, Fates, we will know your pleasures. That we shall die, we know. It is but the time and drawing days out that men stand upon. So he says, we will soon know what fates want to happen to us. We will soon come to know what fates, fates as in destiny, want to happen to us. Okay? You know, what will be the consequences that we will face? We know that soon we will come to know. We know we will die. That we shall die. That, that will be the end. We know that. But we do not know when. It is just a matter of time. Drawing days out means to prolong the days, prolong the period on earth. Okay? That we are concerned. It's just, it's just a matter of time and prolonging our days that we are concerned with. That men stand upon means that we are concerned with. Concerned with means that we are bothered about. Cassius, why he that cuts off 20 years of life cuts off so many years of fearing death. So he says, Cassius says, the person who shortens his own life by 20 years also cuts off 20 years of worrying about death. So you see, you see how Cassius is trying to twist it. He's saying the person 
suppose i am supposed to live for another 20 years but i am killed today which means i am spared the worry of waiting for my death or worrying about my death for the next 20 years you understand brutus says grant that and then is death a benefit so uh, brutus initially had spoken about people in general but cassius is making it seem as though they have done caesar a favor by killing him and thereby ensuring that he does not have to worry about his death for the next 20 odd years okay they have relieved him for of the worry and the pain and the fear of death so he's in a way trying to justify the assassination by presenting it as a case of mercy killing so i mean we can see it as some kind of a cynical attempt to downplay the the horror of the assassination of julius Caesar, he's trying to convince himself, Cassius and others also, that we have done the right thing. We have actually done a favor to Julius Caesar. He does not have to worry for the next 20 years, fearing and waiting for his own death. So in that sense, it's a case of dramatic irony that the audience knows that Julius Caesar is a valiant person. He is not the kind of person who fears death. And this is Cassius who is trying to say that we have saved him the worry of fearing about his own death. Okay, so Cassius' justification, the audience and the readers knows, makes absolutely no sense. But what it does, the line does, is to shed light on the motivations of the conspirators. Because Cassius, what he's trying to do is to intellectually justify whatever they have done, the assassination to himself and to the others brutus says grant that grant that and then is death a benefit so are we caesar's friends so brutus takes the cue from there and then explains it further he says if so if that is so if what you're saying is true grant that then death is a gift benefit means death is like a gift so are we caesar's friend this makes us friends of Caesar. Caesar ke We have actually done him a favor by killing him. That have abridged his time of abridged means to shorten. Abridged version of that. Shorten his time that he would have spent otherwise on earth fearing death. Okay. Stoop Roman stoop and let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood up to the elbows. So he says, kneel Romans, all of you kneel down and let's wash our hands in Caesar's blood. So remember the dream that Calpurnia had seen in Act 2, which she expressed to um, Caesar, which Decius Brutus in a very malevolent and a malicious way completely misinterpreted, right? So that is kind of coming true because now the Romans are actually washing their hands up to the elbows in Julius Caesar's blood. So he says that let's wash our hands with his blood and smear our swords with which we killed him with his blood. And then uh, we will walk outside. Then walk we forth to the marketplace, which is the public place and waving our red weapons red because it is with blood over our heads. Let us all cry peace, freedom and liberty. Right. So that's what we will cry. To make it seem that we have done this for the sake of the larger good of Rome. Okay. Cassius says, stoop then and watch how many ages hence shall this our lofty scene be acted over in states unborn and accents yet unknown. So he says, Cassius says, okay, kneel down everyone and watch. And uh, how many years from now will this lofty scene, he's almost talking as if this line seems to be written more uh, for Shakespeare, you know. For how many more years this particular scene will be enacted? This lofty scene. Lofty because it is so very dramatic. Right? Will this lofty scene, grand scene, lofty actually means grand and dramatic scene, be enacted in countries which are not even born? It will be staged in countries which are not even existing today. And it will be done in languages, accents yet unknown means languages which are not even born till now, which are not even known till date. 
Ruta says, how many times shall Caesar bleed in sport that now on Pompey's basis lies along no worthier than the dust? He says, and how many, Brutus says, and how many times will Caesar bleed for entertainment in sport? This is reference to entertainment. Also, this is another reference to sport, which I will talk about. And as he lies below the statue of Pompey, Jisko ki Caesar ne mara tha. And, but while he is lying beneath Pompey's statue, he is no better than the dust which is there beneath Pompey's statue. So Caesar has been reduced to dust by the evil conspirators. Now, this can also refer to Caesar being wounded metaphorically, maybe reference to political battles. Maybe Brutus implies that Caesar has faced many challenges in the past, but he had emerged unharmed. Uh, it's like someone getting wounded in a sport, but it's in a playful kind of manner. Okay. But the second line that he says is actually more important it, and it is very harsh saying that look at him in the dust beneath Pompey's statue because Pompey was a powerful Roman general who was defeated by Julius Caesar. So Brutus is suggesting that Caesar is sprawled in a very insignificant kind of manner at the base of the statue of, where, of a great man. So he's comparing Caesar to dust. Is comparing Caesar to dust, no worthier than the dust. This is an important key phrase which you should use in your answers. So he's implying that Caesar is not deserving of the position, okay, of his current power and position. So uh, maybe he was referring to the past political maneuvers that Caesar did, which Brutus disagreed with. He also seems to be questioning Caesar's right to have ruled over Rome. So he sees Caesar as some kind of an upstart who had taken the uh, place of someone more deserving that is reference to Pompey. So all these are more of Pompey's men who have got rid of Julius Caesar. Cassius says, so often as that shall be, so often shall the not of us be called the men that gave their country liberty. So he says, as often as it, as it is replayed, this particular lofty scene, our not, not reference to our group, the gang of killers. So often shall the not of us be called the men that gave. We will be called the men who gave liberty to the country, that is Rome. Decius Brutus says, shall we go forth? Cassius says, yeah, every man away and Brutus shall be leading us. And we will grace his heels means we will follow him with grace, with the most boldest and the best hearts of Rome. So he says, we are all the most bold and the best hearts of Rome. At that time, a servant enters and he's Mark Antony's servant. And Brutus says, wait, who comes here? Oh, he's a friend of Antony. Servant says, thus Brutus did my master bid me kneel. So he kneels before him and he says, Mark Antony told me to kneel before you. Okay. And he also told me to fall down and prostrate means completely Sashtang Namaskar before Brutus. And while I am in this position of being completely prostrate, he asked me to say that Brutus is noble. That is a nice man. He is a wise man, he is a courageous man, and he is an honest man. Caesar was mighty, bold, royal, and loving. Okay, so he says, please tell them that I love Brutus and I honor him. Also say that I was scared of Caesar and therefore I honored him and loved him. Okay, so he, Arc Antony has sent this message through his messenger, through his servant. If Brutus will vouchsafe, vouchsafe matlab, whether he will guarantee, will ensure that Antony can come safely to him, that if Antony comes to him, he will not be killed and be resolved how Caesar had deserved to lie in death. And he can convince him, resolve means convince him. If Antony can be convinced that Caesar indeed deserved to die, so two things, two conditions that Mark Antony will be safe when he comes before Brutus and the other conspirators. He won't be killed. 
Number two, that he should be convinced with an explanation that Caesar indeed deserved to die, deserved to be assassinated by this knot of people, this group of people. Then Mark Antony will not love Caesar, the dead Caesar, as much as he will love the living Brutus. If he is able to be convinced by Brutus, okay, he will instead, if he, that happens, he will instead follow, that is, he will be, uh, he will follow and obey the orders of Brutus, he will follow the fortunes and the affairs of noble Brutus, okay, uh, fortunes as in the destiny and the affairs of noble Brutus, uh, Yet thorough actually means through only. Okay, that was Shakespeare's way of writing through. Through the hazards of this untrod state with all true faith. Okay, uh, the hard times of this unprecedented state of affairs. Okay, this whatever is happening is rather unprecedented. So he will follow Brutus if he is able to convince him. So this is the message which has been sent by my master Antony. Brutus says, your master is a wise and a very valiant Roman. That, you know, your master is a very wise and a very courageous Roman. I never thought him to be any less, you know. I always thought of him very highly. Tell him, so please him to come to this place. Tell him that he can come to this place. He shall be satisfied. Means he shall be uh, convinced. He shall be convinced by my explanation which he wants. And by my honor, he will, I am giving my word. Okay, I'm giving a promise that he will leave unharmed. He will depart untouched means he will not be harmed in any way. Servant says, I will fetch him presently. He exits. Brutus says, I know that we shall have him well to friend, that we shall have Mark Antony on our side as a firm friend. So Mark Antony is displaying that he does not quite understand very well. But Cassius does. That's why I said Cassius is a clever and a cunning kind of a person. I wish we may, but yet have I a mind that fears him much and my misgiving still falls shrewdly to the purpose. So he says, I hope we can trust him. I wish we may means I hope we can trust him. I still fear him greatly. Much means I still fear him a lot. You know, I still fear Mark Antony a lot. And my misgiving means my suspicions are usually rather fall shrewdly to the place means my suspicions are generally very accurate. You know, when I'm suspicious, when I doubt someone, usually I'm not wrong. Brutus says, but here comes Antony and Antony re-enters the scene. Welcome Mark Antony. Antony says, oh mighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? And he sees, he first sees Caesar's body and he refers and he immediately exclaims, as a result. So Antony is saying, Oh mighty Caesar, do you lie so low? I mean, referring to the fact that he is um, lying out there. Are all thy con conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk to this little measure? So he says, are all your conquests, referring to his valor in on the battlefield, his glories, the victories that uh, Julius Caesar achieved, especially over Mark Pompey and his sons and the spoils. Spoils means whatever he had kind of gained in terms of riches for Rome. Are they all reduced to this little measure? That is, he's lying there in the dust beneath Pompey's statue. Fare thee well means he's saying him goodbye. I And then he addresses, from here he's addressing the conspirators. He says, I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be led blood? Means who else needs to be killed? Means who, ne who else needs to shed his blood? Who else is rank? Who else uh, is swollen with disease? Okay. If it is me, then there is no R so fit as Caesar's death R. Okay. So he says who else must be killed? Who else is rank, swollen with disease or, you know, Anyone else who is there in the hierarchy who also needs to be disposed of. If it is myself, 
then I want to say that there is no moment which is more correct, more fit than Caesar's death art. The moment where Caesar has been killed and there is no weapon. Instrument means no weapon which is better than the sword with which Caesar has been killed. It has been made rich with the most noble blood. That is referring to Caesar's blood of all this wor world that I do beseech you, that I actually uh, request you that if you have any kind of grudge against me, bear me hard means if you have any kind of complaint against me, grudge against me, that while your purple hands, that is blood soaked hands are still reeking and smoking, that they are still stained with hands. See, Anthony is also being a little sarcastic out here, right? So he's trying to kind of convey his angst but he's saying that, you know, at this time that you have done this very glorious deed, your bloods are stained with hands, your swords, your instruments, your weapons are stained with the blood of Julius Caesar, the most noble blood. Then you can fulfill your pleasure. Then you can fulfill your uh, pleasure. That is, uh, I would be as eager to die as well. Okay, so that's what he's uh, Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so apt to die. That even if I lived a thousand years, I will not find another moment which would be when I will be so eager to die as I am right now. So apt to die means so proper, so correct, so appropriate a moment to die as it were now. So I would, they would even if I were to live for another thousand years. I would not find another better moment, more appropriate moment to die when I would be so eager to die than this particular moment because of the circumstances. No place will please me so, no mean of death as here by Caesar, that there will be no place which will, be, which will please me more, uh, no method of being killed as dying next to Julius Caesar and by your hands. Cut off means referring to the stab. He's referring to the stab by the conspirators, especially Brutus, the choice and master spirits who are the chosen leaders of this era. You are all the leaders of this particular time. So he's being sarcastic. Now don't ask how did he come to know of Brutus because obviously we know that we have been told that you know he ran away stunned and shocked. So he's obviously been made aware of what happened at the Senate when he was taken away by, uh, after he was taken away by Trebonius. Brutus says, O Anthony, beg not your death of us. Please do not ask us to uh, kill you. Though we would be appearing bloody and cruel to you right now, you know, from, by because of what we have done, we would be appearing bloody and cruel by our hands and by our present act. You can see by our hands, which are all bloodstained, and what we have just done, you are only, but you are only seeing our hands, okay, and this bloody work that we have done. You are only seeing our hands and this bloody work that we have done. You are not seeing our hearts. So Brutus is saying, he's kind of distinguishing between his hands and his heart. So he's saying, but you're not seeing our hearts. They are pitiful. They are full of pity and sympathy. But the pity is to the wrong which has been done to the people of Rome. So he's saying they are full of pity for the Rome wrong that has been done to Rome. And just as fire drives out fire, similarly pity drives out pity. That's what he's saying. That pity drives out pity just like fire drives out fire. And that's what led us to kill Julius Caesar. That's what has done this deed on Caesar. For your part, to you our swords have leaden points. So he says, so he means to say that it drove out the pity for Caesar because we were full of pity for the people of Rome, that we wanted to do something for the people of Rome and that helped us drive out any kind of pity that we would have otherwise felt for Julius Caesar. That's how we managed to kill him. And as far as you are concerned, Mark Antony, our swords have soft points, which means the lead points, which is soft. Okay, which means we will not do any harm to you, Mark Antony. Our arms in strength of malice and our hearts of brother's temper do receive you with 
in with all kind love and good thoughts and reverence. Reverence means respect and admiration. Respect and admiration. So he says that our hearts are full of brotherly feelings, kind love and good thoughts and respect and rever uh, admiration for you. So our arms because of what we have done, which they, which he admits is a malicious thing, uh, you know, it would appear to be hostile. Malice means it would appear to be hostile and malicious to you, but our hearts are full of brotherly feeling and they receive you with love, kind love, good thoughts and admiration and respect. Cassius says, your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. So he's, Cassius says that your opinion will matter as much, will be as important and powerful and strong as anyone else in the working of the new regime, the new government which will take over in terms of selection of new officials, selection of new officials and doing of any other kind of official work. Brutus says, only be patient till we have appeased the multitude beside themselves with fear and then we will deliver you the cause why I that did love Caesar when I struck him have thus proceeded. Brutus says that just show some patience. Just be patient till we have calmed the masses. Appeased means calmed. Multitude means the people, the masses. Okay. Who are afraid at this point in time. Okay. So we have calmed them down. Tell them, told them that there is nothing to fear. So just wait till I finish off with that work and then we will explain to you why I, I in particular, who loved Caesar even while I stabbed him, even while I stabbed him, after which he said it to Brutus, even while I stabbed him, I actually loved Caesar. Why did I proceed on this particular action? Antony says, I doubt not of your wisdom, that I do not doubt your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. Let me shake hands with each one of you. First you, Marcus Brutus. Then I will shake hands with you, Cassius. Then Decius Brutus. Yours now, Mytilus Simber. Then Sinna. Then the brave Casca. Yours. And though last but not last in love, good Trebonius. You see the, the sarcasm, valiant Casca, the guy who killed him first, stabbed him first. Trebonius, who misguided him by taking him out of the Senate. And he says, though not last in love. So he's kind of marking each one of them. Okay, gentlemen all, alas, what shall I say? So he says, all of you are gentlemen. So he's being extremely sarcastic at this point in time. What shall I say? My credit now stands on such slippery clown. This is an important line. Why? What does he mean by this? So he says that my reputation and trust that others have in me, my credit. Others trust me. I have a particular reputation. But now, right now, it is on shaky ground because you would think of me, conceit means you would think of me either as a coward or as a flatterer. Coward means I've got scared and therefore I am shaking hands with you or I'm trying to flatter you by saying good things about you and shaking hands with you. That I did love thee. It is true that I loved you, Caesar. He says, it is true that I loved you, Caesar. Oh, it is true that if your spirit, and now he's addressing to Caesar. So he says, it is true that I loved you, Caesar. And if your spirit were looking down upon all of us right now here at the Senate in Rome, then will it not grieve you more than your own death? Will your spirit not feel more sad than the fact that you were killed by seeing your friend, Antony, shake hands, making his peace, means shake hands. The shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes. Okay, making his peace means reconciling. Reconciling with and shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes, most noble. Okay. With the bloody hands of your enemies in front of your dead body. Okay. In the presence of thy corpse, your dead body. 
had I as many eyes as thou hast wounds, if I had as many eyes as you had wounds, weeping as fast as they streamed forth thy blood, and if I were weeping as fast as your wounds are shedding blood right now, okay, it would become me better than to close in terms of friendship with thine enemies. He says, it would be better for me, it would be better than to agree to friendship with your enemies. You know, it would be better to close means to agree to friendship with your enemies. Okay, so he says, forgive me, Julius. So he's referring to him with his first name, Julius. So he says, it would be better than to agree that, you know, I should be weeping so much if I had eyes like this. That would be better than to agree to becoming, becoming friends with your enemies. So please forgive me, Julius. Here was thou bade brave heart. So he says, and now there is a use of metaphors, slightly complicated. I will go a little slow out here. So he says, here is where you were surrounded by hounds and trapped. Now, heart. Okay. Heart is a pun on the word deer. Okay, which is trapped and killed by hounds, heart, deer, Kiran. Okay, so he says, here is where you were trapped. Bade means trapped. And killed like a deer is killed by the hounds. Okay, here is where you fell. And here your hunters, that is the enemies, the conspirators stood, signed in thy spoil and crimsoned in thy lith. Now lith or Leith is the name of a river which is associated with the death and forgetfulness. Okay, it's a name of a river. So he says that here you fell, your hunters stood here, they were smeared with the blood of your slaughter, you know, having killed you, slaughtered you, with inflicting so many wounds on your body. Okay, spoil also refers to the distribution of the goodies to the hunters. You know, when the hunters hunt an animal, they kind of take those different parts of the body they may take. You know, somebody may take uh, any different precious thing, an elephant, the, the sandal, wood and all that kind of stuff, right? The tusk. So he says, in this case, deer, uh, he's saying that the hunters hunted for you out here. So he says, oh world, you, the heart of thee. So he says, you were the forest to this deer. You know, you were the forest to this deer and this indeed, O world, was your deer. So he's kind of punning on the word deer, referring to both deer as in D-E-E-R and D-E-A-R, right? So he says, O world, he's referring to the entire world that you were like the forest to this deer who has been trapped and killed out here. And this indeed, O world, was your heart, you know, was your heart. How like a deer struck by many princes, you lie here, right? So here you have been killed by all these princes and this is where you are lying. Cassius says, Mark Antony, pardon me, Cassius, the enemies of Caesar shall say this, then in a friend it is called modesty. Now, uh, this particular passage of Mark Antony is quite significant because it kind of reveals the inner conflict within Mark Antony's mind because it also reveals his loyalty to Caesar after Caesar's assassination, that in the presence of his enemies, he's actually daring to say all this. Okay, so uh, he, the image of him shaking hands with his enemies is also very powerful, right? Um, it also highlights the betrayal that Julius Caesar suffered and Antony's feelings of conflict. So that's what, so while now he may appear to be very submissive, but it is his entire whatever he's saying, it's creating a lot of dramatic tension on stage. And the, uh, you know, the audience will wonder what will Mark Antony do now? Because he's talking different things. He's looking very disturbed and he's saying different things at the same time. So Cass Antony says, pardon me, Cassius, even enemies of Caesar would say the same. So when it is said by a friend like me, it is plain, unemotional truth in moderation. What he's saying in cold moderation, cold moderation, he says, he's saying that it is the unemotional truth which is said in moderation. Okay, because even enemies of Caesar would say the same thing about Caesar. Cassius says, I do not blame you for praising Caesar. 
but what compact mean you have with us? So Cassius is talking business. So he says, I do not blame you for praising Caesar so much, but what agreement? Compact means what agreement you want to have with us? Uh, will you be pricked? Pricked means you will you be counted among our friends or shall we on? Shall we move on? Move on. Shall we on means shall we move on and not uh, depend on you? Shall we proceed without depending on you? Should we count you as one among our friends or shall we not depend on you? Antony says, that's why I shook hands with each one of you, but was indeed swayed from the point by looking down on Caesar. That's why I shook hands with each one of you, but I got extremely disturbed by when I looked down on Caesar's uh, body. Friends, I am with you and love you all upon this hope that you shall give me reasons why and wherein Caesar was dangerous. That I am with you, but I am also uh, hoping that you will give me the reasons why and you know, in what way, in what way, in what way Caesar was dangerous, just because say you actually killed him. Brutus says, or else were this a savage spectacle, our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Antony, the son of Caesar, you should be satisfied. Brutus says that if we could not provide you the reasons, if we could not provide you the reasons, killing him would have been just another savage act. You know, if you were not able to, so he says our reasons are actually full of good reasons. We have very good reasons. Otherwise, if we did not have good reasons, this would have been just a a very savage kind of, a very evil kind of an act. Our reasons are full of good considerations, good regard, and so much so that if you were Caesar's son, Antony, if you were actually Caesar's son, even you would be satisfied. Antony says, that's all I seek, and I'm moreover suitor, that I may produce his body to the marketplace, and in the pulpit as becomes a French speak in order of his funeral. So he says, that's all I'm asking. I'm asking for the reasons why you decided to kill him, I would also, moreover, suitor means I would moreover request. I would also request that you may please allow me to produce his body in the marketplace and stand in the pulpit on the platform, on the raised platform. Uh, because as a friend, I could speak during his funeral ceremony. So Brutus says, you, you could do that, Mark Antony. Immediately Cassius says, Brutus, can I have a word with you? And then Brutus and Cassius speak separately, which is not heard by the other people on stage. You know not what you do. You don't understand what you're doing. Do not consent. Do not agree to Antony speaking at his funeral because when he speaks, people could be moved. And that's precisely what happens. By whatever he speaks out there, people could be influenced. Moved means it, he, people could be influenced by whatever he speaks. Brutus says, by your pardon, I will myself into the pulpit first. So Brutus says to Cassius, with your permission, pardon means by your permission, I will speak at the pulpit first and I will explain the reason for Caesar's death. Show the reasons means I will explain to the people at the marketplace the reasons for are Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, I will protest. So, uh, I will also announce. Protest means I will also announce that Antony will speak with our permission. That he is speaking at the pulpit with our permission and that we are contented Caesar shall have all the true rites and lawful ceremonies. And I will say that we are convinced that Caesar should have all the proper ceremonies, the funeral ceremonies, the lawful ceremonies and that will benefit advantage means that will benefit us more than doing any harm to us if we do it like this that if i speak and i also announce that antony is going to speak with our permission and that caesar will have all the lawful ceremonies it will benefit us cassius says i know not what you may fall i know not what may fall i like it not so he says i think anything could happen what may fall means Anything could happen and I do not like it. Brutus says, Mark Antony here, take you Caesar's body. So Mark Antony says, to, uh, uh, Brutus says to Mark Antony, take Caesar's body. You during your funeral speech will not blame us for the murder. 
but speak all good about caesar no problem with that and you also need to say that you are speaking with our permission otherwise if you do not you shall not have any part to play in the funeral so you need to abide by these conditions okay and you shall speak in the same pulpit where to i am going after my speech is ended so first i will speak and then you will speak if these conditions are acceptable to you then only you can be allowed to speak and then he says be it so i do desire no more i don't desire anything more brutus says prepare the body then and follow us everybody exits except antony now there is a piece of monologue by antony for caesar's dead body antony says oh pardon me means oh forgive me thou bleeding piece on earth this is a good key phrase for julius caesar so he is referring to him as a bleeding corpse that i am meek and gentle with this butchers you know please forgive me that i am being very meek and gentle meek meek means very timid and gentle with these butchers please use this also as a keyword thou art the ruins of the noblest man he says you are the remains of the most noble man who ever ever lived on earth who ever lived in the tide of times means who ever lived in history woe to the hand you know he is cursing the hand that shed this costly blood he says i curse may disaster fall upon the hand which actually shed this priceless blood of yours you know costly as in priceless blood and may disaster strike you know is cursing over thy wounds now do i prophesy that i now over your wounds i am making this prediction because these wounds are like dumb mouths that open their lips you know he's almost personifying the wounds by talking of them as mouths which are opening up the way as though a mouth would open its lips the lips ruby as in red in color you know dumb because the wounds are i mean the mouths are now the wounds are speechless to beg the voice and utterance of my tongue because they are begging me to speak they are speechless but they are begging me to speak okay a curse shall light upon the limbs of men i now predict that a curse will fall upon the limbs of men so he is now cursing domestic fury and fierce civil strife so he says that domestic means internal anger between brothers you know that between brothers there will be fights and there will be civil war that shall cover all parts of rome you know it will be completely burden cumber means it will completely burden all parts of italy blood and destruction shall be so in use and dreadful objects so familiar so he says that dreadful sights will be so familiar and destruction will be so common destruction will be so common and dreadful sights will be so common uh, that mothers will just smile when they watch their infants being cut to pieces quartered by war means that even when their children their infants are cut to pieces they will smile because the civil war will be so common okay it's a very gruesome kind of a line because he's almost cursing this on italy that this is what is going to befall you for having shed this costly blood and see all pity choked with custom of fell deeds so he says the familiarity with cruel deeds custom of fell deeds means familiarity familiarity with cruel deeds will choke all pity you know pity will get choked because everyone will be so familiar with so much of cruelty okay and caesar spirit ranging for revenge with eight by his side come hot from hell and caesar spirit will seek revenge will seek vengeance with goddess eight now goddess eight was the goddess is referring to mythology was the goddess of destruction 
was the goddess of destruction uh, in classical mythology. She will be by the side of Caesar's spirit. She will rush from hell and in these places, okay, she will come hot from hell and in these places, confines with a monarch's voice, okay, will cry out havoc in the king's voice, okay. Monarch means king, king, she will cry out havoc and let slip the dogs of war. The ghost of um, um, Julius Caesar will let slip, means will unleash the dogs of war so that the smell of this foul assassination, foul deed, foul deed means the assassination will reek above the earth. The smell, the stench will reek above the earth with the rotting corpses. Carrion men is referring to rotting corpses, begging, groaning means begging to be buried. So he's kind of painting an extremely ghastly and gruesome kind of a sign. So this will happen and havoc is generally the war cry which the commander of an army gives to say that let's completely go and destroy the enemy. So he's kind of evoking battlefield images with Julius Caesar's spirit with goddess eight who is the goddess of destruction in classical mythology by his side coming and completely unleashing havoc and destruction uh, all over the place where everyone is dead and killed. Okay, so it's a very gruesome kind of sight. At that point in time, a servant end enters and this guy is a servant of Octavius Caesar. Who is Octavius Caesar? Octavius Caesar is uh, the grand nephew, also the adopted son of Julius Caesar. Octavius Caesar is the adopted son, also the grand nephew of Julius Caesar. So servant says, yeah, I do serve uh, him. So Antony says Caesar had written to him to come to Rome, asking him to come to Rome. Servant says that, yes, he did receive the letters and he is coming. And he asked me to say this to you. And that point in time, he sees Julius Caesar's dead body. Oh, Caesar. So Antony says, uh, thy heart is big. Your heart is big. Get thee apart and weep. So he says, your heart is swelling with grief. Your heart is big means it is big because it is swelling, literally speaking, with grief. Okay. So he says, go ahead and weep. Get thee apart. Apart means tear apart and weep. Okay. Passion I see is catching. Passion refers to grief out here. Grief I see is catching because mine eyes, because when I am seeing you getting emotional, seeing those beads of sorrow stand in mine. Thine. He says, my eyes seeing the tears of sorrow in your eyes, my eyes are also beginning to water. And then he says, is your master coming? So he's making this enquiry from the servant of Octavius Caesar. So he says, he lies tonight within seven leagues of Rome. Seven leagues is a reference to 21 miles of Rome. That he's staying tonight about 21 miles from Rome. So he says, post back with speed. He says, hurry back quickly to him. Hurry back quickly to him. Post back with speed means hurry back quickly to him and tell him what has happened here. Rome right now is in mourning and it is a dangerous Rome. It is not a Rome which is safe for Octavius Caesar. So he says, hi hence, hi hence, um, um, get going and tell him so. You know, hi hence means get going and tell him so. But just wait a minute. You shall not go back till I have taken this corpse, this dead body to the marketplace. There I will try through my oratory, through my speech, uh, that how the people will react to this cruel issue of the bloody men, what these people have done. How um, through I will try uh, try through my speech the, you know, to provoke the people, the reaction of those people to the cruelty of these bloody men. And based on that, based on that, what happens, you will report back to young Octavius of what is the state of affairs right now in Rome. So please lend me your hand, help me carry the body and both of them exit with Caesar's uh, body. Oof. With this, with this, we have come to the end of this very longish Hack 3 Scene 1. I hope it is clear. 
you will have to make notes of whatever i've explained and that will help you remember this that much better and once you have done so in your own handwriting the short notes it will always help you recall this better and be able to deal with it better as far as the questions in the examination are concerned we will do our success test papers later on uh, with detailed questions both mcqs and uh, the reference to context questions but that will be a little later but for now i think this act 3 scene one see my energy levels have also dropped by doing this continuously okay tata bye bye thank you very much god bless you share and subscribe okay tata